Hello, good morning. Welcome to Stump and Chat. It's Tuesday. Oh gosh, what's the date? Is it the 24th? Do I remember? I think it's the 24th. 25th. Goodness me. I'm sure I remember turning. I've got um, a calendar in the kitchen and I turn that over each day just to keep me up to date with what's going on and um, trying to keep track of my life. Okay, so today I'm going to be focusing on the Flowers of Friendship bundle, which is the stamp set and the punch. Um, if you've got your catalogue handy, let's just grab mine. If you've got a catalogue handy, you'll find it on page 78. Um, and I'm focusing on this and the hand-penned bundle this month for all of my Facebook Lives. And I've also got two classes in the post that you can purchase um, that include PDFs and live videos if you want to go down that option as well. And moving forward, what I plan to do is with these kind of classes in the post, turn them into face-to-face -face events as well. So there will be options for everybody. So those of you that aren't close enough to come here to my studio, you can still do the online version and I will still um, film a video for those online. So if you're joining, please say hello. It's lovely to have you. Um, it's fresh out there this morning, but we do have a bit of blue sky. We've got sunshine, which is always good. So just while people are hopping on, um, I'm focusing as well on, with the Flowers of Friendships lives that I'm doing, I'm focusing on the hand-penned designer series paper because there are so many beautiful colours in there. And I just think it's screaming out for us to, you know, go out of our comfort zones and use some different colours with our projects. And it's definitely making me do that because I always stick with, the subtles, um, but it is challenging me to use colours that maybe I might not pull out quite so often. So, morning Ellie, how are you? Not seeing comments on my Mac, which doesn't surprise me. Internet's doing all funny things. Stampin' Up! website is doing funny things this morning. So, um, struggling to get onto the demonstrator website if you've been looking on there, trying to maybe order something or looking at what's going on. Um, there's some kind of issue with it at the moment. Well, it was just before I came live anyway, I couldn't get on. Morning, Lucianne, lovely to have you join us. So let us make a start. I haven't got my light ready. Let's pull you down, move everything out of the way. Excuse the hand for just one second. Um, and we'll have a look at what we're doing today. So bear with the hand changed all of my settings on my stand when I did a zoom the other night. Right, lights, camera, action. Zoom in a bit. Wait for Facebook to catch up. So this was what I did, not last week, but the week before. It might have been, I might have done this on a Saturday morning. So I did promise a few Saturday lives, but it's not going to happen every Saturday because, you know, I do have a life as well and I have lots going on around here that I cannot keep up with gardening, housework. So, um, and obviously we want to try and get away at the weekends as well. So Saturday lives will only happen. I'm just going to refresh my Facebook and see whether it will bring some comments up. Saturday lives are only going to happen when... I get an opportunity to hop on and I will try and give you advance notice. Right, let's get in shop. So this is what I did a couple of weeks ago. And I've just popped this one on Instagram and it's gone a little crazy. I think it reached the explore page and everybody seems to be loving it. Um, but it all came, all of these projects, the colours came from the hand penned DSP. So if you want to see these projects in action, just scroll back a little bit. They are from a couple of weeks ago. Um, and they used this sheet, that looks like it's upside down, of DSP from the hand-penned. 
Morning, Ruth. I'm very good, thank you. Very good. A little bit tired, but that's nothing unusual. I woke up at 2.30 this morning. Honestly, I don't know what is going on. I'm either waking at 4, which is a slightly worrying time for one heading towards a certain age. I either wake at 4 or I wake at 5, and then I'm wide awake if I wake at 5. But this morning I woke at half 2 with a bit of a stomach ache. Um... And I made a like a chili last night and I put in some extra chili flakes. And now please correct me on my pronunciation, but I think it's pronounced chipotle. And I put a few extra into what I did when I last made it. Um, and I use a recipe from my Thermomix, which is absolutely fab. And it's so easy to, to make a chili or um, a bolognese. But it did have a bit of a kick to it last night, but I did wake up at half past two this morning and it felt like I had a brick in my stomach. So I was awake for a little bit. So that's probably why I'm feeling a bit tired, but I'm always tired. You know me. Anyway. Oh, Jacqueline, good morning. How are you doing? So I was just waffling on about the hand penned papers that I know you all love. Um, they're just so inspiring. So this is where the first projects came from. So next, last week I used this. This was the next one. And I created, I've got a couple of other different colourways, but I think I've put them away. Honestly, guys, I have so many creations here in the studio that I've been doing from Facebook Lives and classes in the post that I'm getting overrun. So I will be selling some of my projects and donating some money to the Sue Ryder Hospice. So please do look out for that. And obviously I'm just going to be posting things out randomly to people as well. So these color these projects came from this sheet of DSP. So that was last week's live. Let's grab these out. And oh the door's just blown open downstairs. And Alfie thinks that someone's coming so He's on a move. This is the next sheet. I, I've not used any of these yet. So I've still got three more sheets to do after today. I love this. Love this one. And this one too as well. Because it's got the pale papaya and the blushing bride. But today, I'm using this one. So it's absolutely beautiful. So we've got Misty Moonlight. Let's pull that away for a moment. Garden green, misty moonlight, pale papaya. Haven't taped my grid down. Let's just wait for catch up. And of course, let's move all of these up here. Tape my grid paper down. Waiting for catch up. I think that will do. And then of course, the flowers of friendship stamp set with the coordinating punch of course you can buy these separately but if you purchase them as a bundle you save yourself 10 percent so lots and lots of lovely images in this set lots of thank you greetings which are always handy so i've also pulled out some blends i'm not going to be coloring with the, the misty moonlight. I find, for me, they're quite a dark colour to colour with. Um, so it would only, I, I don't know if I would colour whole flowers with them, but that's just me. I, You know, dark colours and me don't, don't gel so well together. So I'll be colouring using the pale papaya. I've got my trusty memento ink pad because of course I rarely stamp without pulling this one out. And I'm also using a blending brush and this will be with the pale papaya so how are we all doing anyway me waffling about lack of sleep which Jason and I sleep terribly we rarely get a good night's sleep we never lie in we're awake at the crack even on the weekends the weekend I was awake at five um and we were wide awake at six so that's nothing unusual. And I don't mind that. I'm an early bird, so I'd rather be up and getting on. But how are you all? What are you all up to today? We've got prospects of a bit of warm, warm weather coming our way. So 
Janet, I don't know if you're on here yet, but hopefully you've sent it our way from lovely sunny Spain. Right, let me pull in some kits. And let's start creating. So as I've said, I'm going to use a, a basic white layer for this one. My inspiration for colour came from this sheet of DSP. And this is the reverse, which works lovely with it. So let's just push these inks back a little, make a bit of space. And let me mount up the stamps that I want. So here I've got my little, talked about this last week, my little template just to show me which way to stamp my images so that when I'm punching, they're going to line in and make it easier for me to punch. So today I am using this large image on both projects. So I'm making two cards using these colour combos. Let's just move that punch out of the way. And then I need both of these individual flowers, both of which now I'm going to mount that on my block that way. And according to my template, mount that one with two feet on the ground like that. Um, yeah, of course, the two individual ones work with the punch. And what else do I, I don't think I need any little leaves today. I need a greeting, but I might switch that out. So let's start with this one. Thank you for everyone, everything, because that's a good one to go with. And I think that's all for now. I've also got another card to show you. I'm not going to make it, but I'm going to show you it where I've used this this lovely um, string or row of flowers, which is great. Okay, how are we doing for light? Ellie, you've just finished your Tuesday job of cleaning out the Guinness. Yeah, I love that you, um, you schedule in your time for doing that. You've got Zoom class on Friday. Oh, exciting, exciting. What are you using for your Zoom class, Ellie? I've got a couple of Zoom things coming up. Okay, let us make a start. So first of all, I'm just going to take my base layer and this is five and three quarters by eight and a quarter. And I'm just gonna fold it in half and give it a crease. And pop that to one side right now i've got some scrap pieces here for my stamping and what i'm going to do i think is do my stamping first because i always think it's important when we're using the memento ink i feel it's important to let your images stand for a bit and let the ink dry out before we start colouring with the blends, especially I find when I'm using a pale blend that if I do too much colouring, it can bleed a little. Now, I don't know if that's just me. Anybody else has experienced that? But I always like to let my images sit for a while. So I think I'm going to stamp the flowers that I need for both of my projects ahead of time and then let them sit for a bit before I go in and colour them. So I've got some spare skinny strips here of basic white. Got my spongy mat. Even though I'm using red rubber, I'm still in a habit of pulling in my sponge mat. Um, really, it's just for the photopolymers. Now, one thing to remember... If you've got this set, you would have figured this out already. But when you're stamping this flower, because of the way the punch works, if you stamp directly next to it, when you line it in the punch, you'll lose that image. So I like to leave a whole stamp's worth of space. So I would pretend I was stamping there 
and then stamp next to it. So leave a good gap, as, as much as the width of the stamp in between. I can't remember how many of these I need, maybe four. Otherwise, when I will show you, when we go to punch them out, so when we open up our punch, if I was to have stamped a flower here, right next door to this one, the chances are that I would cut into it with that leaf image there. So by leaving a good gap, it means you're not wasting paper because at least this little bit you get left, you could then stamp your leaves in there. Okay, so I want four of the small and looking at my projects, I think I want two large. And remember the large one lines up this way. So I hadn't realised we've got a bank holiday coming up. I'm just so out of touch, honestly. I do have a planner, but I don't think it's in because my planner, um, I have to date it. I, I buy um, inserts to go in my, it's an agenda planner. Um, and I have to date them. So I, all the dates and all the bank holidays aren't automatically in there. And it wasn't until we were chatting with the children at the weekend and they were discussing about what they were doing for the bank holiday. I was like, oh, is it a bank holiday? <laughs> totally forgetting. Um, would it be, would they call it spring bank holiday or is it May Day? Oh, I don't know, see, I'm rubbish. Anyway, we've got a bank holiday. Does that mean we've got a half term coming up as well? Ellie and Lucianne, you're telling me, you'll be able to tell me, answer me that question. Lucianne, you're getting ready for brownie t brownies tonight. Oh, fun. What are you, are you creating something specific? What are you up to at Browners tonight? Do you have a theme each week? Is that how you work? Okay, so I've stamped my images. I'm going to sit them to one side for the moment. Now, aside from the punch, the other items I'm going to be using are the Stitch So Sweetly dies. Um, they're just such a handy set. We've got lots of handy sets. You hear me say that all the time, but... I, I've got particular die sets that, that are kind of my go-to. And I've not had this set that long. And I wonder how I managed without it. So I want to die cut this Misty Moonlight piece with one of these. So I'm just going to run that through my cutting machine very quickly. Somebody sat right under my desk again. Bless him. So let's put that one back. And then we know we're not going to lose it. Okay. And then I should have... Oh, do you know what I've done? I think this layer was that layer there. So I'm going to have to just cut another one really quickly. Right, two and an eighth by three and a quarter. Let's just trim one. That's what happens when I put all those pieces, spare pieces in my... That was the piece I was supposed to use. All is not lost though. Another piece cut. Now, what I'm going to do on this layer is bring back in my scrap piece of grid. And I'm going to take this large image here and I'm going to do something different with it. So I've got my tape dispenser and I'm going to be using the Garden Green ink pad. Now, rather than having these images... I'm going to replace them with these images so that you get a different look. I could quite easily stamp this one down and colour those in. But I wanted to show you just how, you know, how a stamp can be quite versatile. And don't look at it 
for what you see straight away. Think about what you can do with it. So this could get a little bit messy. And if you've got washi tape, this would work quite well. So I'm just going to, might need a longer bit than that. Pop some tape over the flower heads. I don't want to stick it down too much because it does leave, the only thing with using sellotape is that it does leave a bit of residue of the stickiness on your stamp. So make sure you give your stamp a jolly good clean after. So I'm trying not to get my hand in the shot. So I've literally covered over. Now you could do this with a post-it note, but I just find they fall off before I get to the ink pad. I turn it over and then they fall off and then it all goes wrong. So this way, it's not ideal, but at least it's covering over the images that I don't want to ink up. Now, of course, if you have the marker pen in Garden Green, so if you have the Stampin' Right markers, you could take out your pen and colour in with the brush tip. You could just colour it in like that, and then you don't need to omit what I'm doing, but I'm showing you another way of doing this. And I don't even know if I have garden green in my Stampin' Right markers. So what I'm gonna do is check you're in shot. Is ink this up? I think you can see from there. Let's move my tape a minute. Ink this up more towards the bottom like this. And it's a bit of a sticky mess, but I'm going to carefully pull off the tape without getting it on my fingers. Like that. Stayed clean. And then I'm going to lay this down onto my layer. Doesn't matter if any of it overhangs. It's not a problem. Because it's we're going to cover over. So we have that. Okay, so we have a flowerless stem with leaves on. And then what we can do is pop this layer straight down onto... I didn't check my Tombow before I started. Oh, we're all good. And then we're going to pop this straight down onto this lovely little scallopy layer. Like this. And I'm going to just put that to one side because let's do a little bit of colouring. So I need, for my card, two small... I have to sit down for this. I need two small flowers and one large. So I like to use the, the bullet tip on the pens. And I'm not really going, I am going to do a bit of blending. Let's start with the large one first. I like to go all the way around the outside first. And everybody will do this different and then gently cover over the middle so that the centre is slightly paler. But then I'm contradicting myself by adding in some dark just where the image gives us these kind of guidelines as where there should be a bit of shadowing. So I like to go around the outside. I feel like I'm 20 foot away from what I'm doing which isn't great. Let's do this one as well. Because I'm not really blending, blending, so it doesn't matter if it dries a little. And then I'm just going to kind of line over. And this is where I find if you don't let your image dry, when you're going over lines like this, this is where you may get a bit of bleeding I love the noise these blends makes. Who loves our stamping blends? I mean, there's nothing not to love about them. Just gonna go back over 
these center lines to add that layer of depth. Oh, I need to do two of these, don't I? And then with these flowers, I'm going to just do the outer part. I hope you can see and that my hand isn't in the shot. So I'm going to do the outer part in the paler, pale papaya. Let's do two. I can't read your comments, guys, just because of the view that I've got on my Mac. They kind of squeak when you use these pens. And then I'm just going to fill in the center part. I've got the right bit there, yeah. With the dark, which is quite dark, but it does kind of dry a little paler. It kind of soaks in to the cardstock and it becomes absorbed. I don't want to hover my head right over so that you get a view of my scalp. That wouldn't be so great. So if there's a dodgy bit of colouring going on, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me. That's the wrong, that's the right lid. And I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not really blending. It's just simple, simple colouring. Okay. Move those back to my basket. And then bring in the punch. And then I'm just going to punch out this one. Two hands to punch is much better than one. It gives you a much crisper punch, I found. When I am punching um, with our coloured cardstock, sometimes it feels like it's, it's punching a little bit lazy, if you know what I mean by that. And it leaves a little kind of rough edge on one corner. And I think that's just down to not kind of being, giving it a good crisp punch with two hands. It's tempting to always try and do it with one, but can you hear that? Just a really good, crisp, clear punch. Okay, just line that one in. Lots of mess and confetti everywhere. And then give your punch a shake. Make sure there's no pieces left in there because that does happen. Let me just check comments. Oh, it's half term next week. I thought it was. Oh, you're doing your languages badge. That sounds exciting. Ruth, half term starts on Monday. And then when they go back, only six weeks until the summer holidays. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Jason and I were saying last night, because um, I had Evsy yesterday for the day. And they came to pick her up and they, they must have gone, I don't know, about 6.30 and we had dinner and I was tired. I didn't really feel like coming over and doing any work. Um, so by the time we'd eaten dinner and I tidied up, I was like, should we just sit down? And we started watching um, Line of Duty, started watching that from the beginning. So I said, let's just sit down and just relax tonight. <laughs> Just as well, because I was awake for half of the night. And um, I was falling asleep before nine o'clock. My eyes were drooping. I was literally, I was doing a Churchill. I was doing the nodding dog. My head was going. Um, but it was still light, even it, I think it was nearly 20 to 10. And it was still daylight out. And it's such a shame when the evenings aren't that warm enough. For you to do a lot out there so I've said we you know it's only May we've got plenty of time where we can be out working in the garden at night so right is it Zanna my brain is not good at remembering I think that's how I pronounce it time does go quickly I know doesn't it we were talking I was talking about this as well and I think we just it's because we do a lot We've got busy lives, haven't we? And we're trying to schedule everything in. So, and I'm convinced that's why time is whizzing. Okay, so I've taken a piece, let me give you some measurements. Taken a piece of pale papaya and it measures two and a quarter by five and a half. 
okay so it's just going to fit on my card base with a little bit left a little bit of space at the top and the bottom Ruth or daughter's doing a GCSE in September starting the studies I know gosh I don't know I don't know where the years have gone it is scary you know Sophie's been to university she's in the last couple of months of fin finishing her master's it's just scary and like I've said I think I feel it's because we're try we're doing so much we're trying to cram so many things into our lives that the weeks just fly by right I'm going to line this up with my grid and try and get this straight sometimes it's easier to look that way I think that's okay does that look straight to you so yeah lots going on but I think I'll be working this evening which is fine because I do love what I do Okay, next what I'm going to do is pop this down onto my base. So a bit of Tombow around the edge. I'm going to pop this one just over to the left side of my card. I look like I've got a bit of an overhang down there, but I'm not too worried about that. Even at the top and the bottom. Sana, your daughter's doing her GCSEs as well. Yeah, it's been a tough time for them, hasn't it? I mean, it's good that they're back at school now. They're making the connections and hopefully they're, they're feeling that they're, they're part of something again. Right, I don't want that just for the moment. Next, I've got the reverse side. Oh, look at the colours. Look at the colours, beautiful. I'm going to use the reverse side of this. And I've cut a little skinny strip. And that die that I used, this one here, I'm going to create a little scallopy border. So I'm going to run it through my cutting machine and create a little scalloped border. Now, days gone by... We used to have punches that do this. In fact, I've probably still got some in my retired product section. Um, but I love the flexibility of how you can use these dies. Not, again, a bit like the stamp that we're using. Don't look at it and think, I can just cut a rectangle from this. You can do so, so much more with it. So always... Get your brain into thinking what else can be done. So all I'm going to do, it doesn't go right to each end. I'm not worried about that. Just checking on the length of this. And I'm going to pop some Tombow just on this garden green layer here. And just pop that over just so it reveals a really skinny strip of the scallops like that and then I'm going to lay this lower than what I did on my own you've not seen my original card but I'm going to bring everything down a little bit it's a crime putting glue on this lovely pattern but it's a good job we get two sheets in a pack <laughs> so we get to um, use all of it and that pattern is kind of, do you feel it feels like it's upright that way? But it's totally fine. Nobody is going to say, oh, you know, that pattern is going in the wrong direction. Not worried about that. So next, let's bring in this layer. What I'm going to do is just curl the edges on these flowers. And then layer them over where the original flower heads were on the stamped image so if you're just popping in this is the image that I've just stamped down and we've taken off 
covered over, masked over these with some tape. But of course, if you've got a marker, stamp and write marker, you can just colour in this part of the stamp. I need to update my Stamping Right marker collection because when I first started stamping up some 11 and a half years ago, I'm going to pop some dimensionals on here first. When I first started, I bought the whole the case. I think it was called the Many Marvellous Markers. Is it still called that now, the whole case? Um, but of course, since then, we've had colour revamps. We've lost some colours. And we've had new colours come in and I've totally lost track and I've never really replaced. And because they come, so these, these uh, Stampin' Right markers, they come in collections and our colour collections. So I've got some, but not all of like each colour family. So I think what I need to do is totally revamp my whole collection because they're great for colouring in certain parts of images, um, specifically things like this one here. Alfie's having a scratch over there. You just carry on, mate. It's fine. <laughs> Bless his heart. Um, you could just, now he's having a shake, you could just colour in the word thank you and then leave off the for everything. You'd have to be a bit careful about that little bit there, but it could be done. So that's the one thing I love about our Stamping Right markers. Oops. And it also means that you've got an ink colour that you could colour in stamped images with, with everyone in that collection. So I'm going to pop this little layer just down here, quite low, because I did it a bit high on my last card and I wasn't impressed with how it looked at the end. Well, not that I wasn't impressed, but I just felt this layer could have gone a bit lower. And then on the back of my flowers, just add a bit of Tombow. Do that one first. Oh, did a backflip and a bit on that one. A little bit of Tombow goes a long way and then we'll just pop these randomly over the stems. Just position them so that they line up with the stem, of course. They need to feel like they're part of it. like that I mean it's not going to stay nice and um, kind of fluffy like this once it goes in an envelope it's going to get squashed but as long as it looks good before it leaves the studio then that's that's all that matters to me and then next I've cut another skinny strip of um, pale papaya and this one just measures half an inch and I'm going to snip off a little end and I'm going to hover this down at the bottom. doesn't matter how long it goes really. And I'm not going to stick that for just a moment. What have I done with my mat? It's behind me. And then on a piece of garden green cardstock, using the garden green ink, I'm going to take the thank you for everything, ink it up. And before I do that, I've got a feeling that this stamp is a little bit crooky. So I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap grid and I'm going to hover over a line and see how it stamps. So that was what I thought. Now, when I stamp it down, can you see how it's going up at an angle? So I followed that line here. So when I stamp it down, I need to just turn my stamp slightly to the right and hope that it lines up. Because obviously when we stick our stickers on to our stamps, let's just flatten that out a bit. Um, we can't guarantee that we're getting it on there perfectly. So I need to hover slightly down to the right going to tuck my hair away and not breathe for a moment so that would be straight and if I turn it slightly to the right hopefully there we go it's pretty straight on my cardstock so again 
So I always do that when I'm stamping a greeting, unless it's photopolymer, I always test run it first to see how straight it's going to stamp. And let's just snip off that end. And bring this back in. And my plan is to have that layer there and then pop this one over the top. So let's bring this one down quite low. Don't want to hide too many of these leaves up here. So let's have this layer quite low down. Like that. And then no dimensionals on here because we've already got a bit of height going on with the, the scallopy rectangle. And then we'll hover that one in a bit over to the right, not in the center. Oop, it's stuck to me, stuff tomboy. Hello, my little man. Just brought me his squeaky bone that doesn't squeak anymore, thank goodness. He loves that bone, absolutely loves it. If he loses it out in the garden, he gets really anxious about it. I'm just grabbing my embellishments. Yeah, he gets really anxious about it. He's got other toys, but he goes crazy looking for it in the house. Um, those of you that have got a dog would probably understand, but um, he always has to have something to greet you with got a lovely new pack of pearls yeah he likes to greet you with something so quite often he will drag his bed if he can't find his bone his bed comes with him here's a scallywag so what i'm going to do is take is this the dark yet yeah, take the dark pale papaya i'm going to use the the bullet tip and just color in my pearls Let's do one of each size, a large, a medium and a small. Just trying to think what else was in my box that would have worked. So great thing about the stamping blends, not just for coloring in images, they're great for coloring in our embellishments. So let's pick one up. Move over a bit, that's it. And a medium and a small. Lovely. And there we go. I'm just going to wipe my hands because I've probably got ink on them then from that sheet of acetate I just coloured on. And there we go. So just a different way of using this stamped image. You could, of course, colour in your leaves if you wanted to, but really simple colouring in um, and just adding another look to this image here. So rather than just stamping this one, you've got the option here of, of adding in different flowers. So I love that about this set that, it's, you know, the images are really versatile as well. Right, let's just bring my screen back down. So that's card number one. Let's bring in some bits and pieces for card number two. So of course, same color combo, but we're using some deeper, just wanna get rid of this bit of glue before it sticks to everything. Let it dry and then my adhesive remover will take that off. So again, same color combo, I've got lots of spare pieces in here. Let's make sure I don't use the wrong one again. Move some inks out of the way. So this time I'm going quite a lot deeper with my colours, which this has taken me out of my comfort zone because I love a white layer. Um, I do use coloured cardstocks for layers, but I do like, I do like how white, how a white background just makes a card so crisp. So Misty Moonlight, five and three quarters by eight and a quarter, folded in half. Then I'm using exactly the same layers, so exactly the same measurements on the last card. So we've got two and a quarter 
by five and a half for my pale papaya layer. Then I've cut a strip from the DSP at one inch. Let's just check that. And then I've cut it the same length at five and a half. So let's just pop that layer down while they're both here. And I'm gonna do it the opposite side. Oh, this color, this, these colors are so pretty. Let's try and get this straight. Does anyone else love our grid paper and how it helps to line things up? There. Love this sheet. Love the whole pack of DSP, to be honest. Um, and where are we now? We're 25th. I don't know if I'll get a chance to squeeze in another live um, using this DSP because next month I'm going to be moving on to something else. Your daughter, Zana, your daughter's halfway through them. Oh, bless her. Such a lot of pressure for them, isn't it? Really is. I don't think I'd want to be sitting exams again. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so on my last card... Let me bring you my last card back in. So I used the Misty Moonlight to create my scallopy rectangle. Just pulling in the die. So this time I'm going to be brave and do it in garden green. So I'm just going to run that through my cutting machine. How are we doing for time? I still haven't changed my battery in my clock. That's terrible, isn't it? I mean, I'm over here every day and I still haven't got around to doing that. So I've just cut a lovely, look how gorgeous the detail is in there. I hope that's focusing. So I'm using the same size die. Pop that to one side for the moment. And now I've got a skinny strip here. Let's bring back in this image again. Now, where I used sellotape on here, you have to be really careful because from experience, the sellotape does leave a bit of stickiness on your stamp. And then when you stamp it back down, it can stick to your paper slightly. So do be very wary of that. But what I'm gonna do is do exactly the same again. I'm not gonna press it down too firmly. So just a bit of tape over the three flower heads. If you position them strategically, when you pull one end, all three pieces will come up together. And to be honest, if you miss a little bit, it's not too bad because the flower heads that we're punching out do kind of cover over everything. So what we're gonna do is ink this up again. Like that. Oh, it's just waiting to cover you in ink, isn't it? Pull them off. Now in hindsight, really, I didn't need to do this again. I could have stamped the whole thing because I'm going to be fussy cutting this out. So I'm just gonna line that on my bit of scrap. like that so i could have just stamped the whole image on there because i wanted to for a different look i'm going to save that bit that's how tight i am but can get a couple of flowers out of that bit so bear with me while i trim around here which isn't too tricky I want to be quite careful because I'm going to be laying this down onto the garden green layer. So if it was going down onto a basic white layer, it wouldn't matter so much because it wouldn't show from behind. But I don't really want any rough edges like I just did there. So just trim around gets tricky at some points because bits get in the way 
So using like the inner part of my scissors and just turning my paper as I close my scissors. Which sounds like, you know, teaching people to suck eggs, but honestly, there are some people that really do struggle cutting things out. For some of us, it's just an easy, simple task. And it's like anything. There are things that I find really hard that other people just find so easy to do. We're only human and it's good that we're all different. It would be a boring world if we were all the same, wouldn't it? So just cutting around this. I've got lots of things to talk to you about after as well. Things going on in the world of stamping up. So a bit conscious about time, 10 to. Okay, so let's take this layer. Let's just turn these back down a little bit and I'm gonna pop some mini dimensionals. Oops, that one fell off, just on the leaves. So just one on each of the leaves. like that and just pop this straight down on to this garden green layer right you're stuck to me and it doesn't matter how high it is if because we're going to stick our flowers over the top so it doesn't really matter if, if you think your flowers are going to protrude over the edge of here I'm quite happy for that to happen so I'm just going to Plop it down there and put that to one side for the moment. Let's bring back in these and quickly colour in. Where's my other pen? There it is. Everything's falling out of my basket now. There we go. So I like to start with light first. And people colour in different ways. Some people start with a bit of light and then blend with the dark. I seem to always start with the light and I kind of go around the outside a few times and then gently over the centre to help give it a bit of depth. So Jason said last night that we should go away in the new motorhome over the bank holiday weekend. So we'll probably just maybe have one night away. You know me, I like being at home. <laughs> but we'll maybe have, I'll let him have one night away. But then we were like, oh, but everything's going to be booked. You know, we're just lastminute.com and we just kind of, fly by the seat of our pants and make last minute decisions to sort of head off anywhere or do anything. We're not very good at planning ahead. So whether we'll be able to get anywhere, we don't know. And whether Jason's got anything up his sleeve, he's looking for a new racing car trailer. He said last night, jokingly, we were eating dinner. He said, we could go to Painter. And I said, why do, we, why do we want to go to Paynton? He said, well, there's a race car trailer for sale over there. <laughs> it's like, great. Yeah, there was an ulterior motive in his thinking. So I'm just going around the outside in the pail and then filling in the centers with the dark. I'm not blending it in any way. I'm just coloring. You could, of course, blend these. You could bring back in the pail and go over the top of the whole of it. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Like that. And then we'll pull back in the punch. Line these in. Punch it out. Make a nice confetti mess everywhere. So the next thing, of course, if we're going to have a bit of dry weather, 
is that I need to be about to water the kitchen garden. So as I was saying earlier, actually, these bits of waste, you can get some of the small, especially these images, you can stamp those and use up that bit of cardstock. So I wouldn't throw that away. I mean, there are limits on what I throw away. I don't keep every single scrap, but I try and keep as much as I can that I think will be usable. Let's bring back in our card base. Yeah, so at the weekend, I did a final bit of digging, or shall we say no digging, um, a bit of hoeing, a bit of removing some weeds, and I planted... What did I plant? I think, I think I planted parsnips and something else, but I can't remember. My mind's gone blank now. That's got to be an age thing. And I know I'm not alone. I know lots of us have brain blocks. As my previous card, I'm gonna do exactly the same. So I'm using the same pieces. I'm going to pull in my die and then just, my Mac's gone to sleep, cut myself another little scallopy border. Yes, yeah, so I planted a couple of things. I put my potatoes in, which I feel is really late, but we shall see. So they're only, um, I like the Charlotte salad potatoes. So I feel like I'm just so late with everything this year, but it'll all come together. I've still got a few more things that I need to plant. I need to get some courgette seeds and some butternut squash. I probably need to get a wriggle on with those. A butternut squash doesn't come until later in the year anyway. Okay, so just another lovely little scallopy border yeah so obviously in my greenhouse i've still got tomatoes that are coming on i've got cucumbers i've got my french beans so i need to be about to to look after them oh i've just realized i've missed this one let's just punch this one out the wobbles make another mess and then I'm going to pop this layer down at the bottom just like I did on the other one so is anyone else growing Ruth do you grow in your garden do you grow veggies and at the moment obviously we've had so much rain all of my water butts are full. Oh, just really enlarged my screen then. Yeah, all my water butts are really full, but that won't last forever. It soon goes. And I've got, I've got three, one, two, three, four water butts on, or two water butts, large ones on my greenhouse. And then on my little shed down there, I've got two of like the mini water butts. So I'm just going to pop this layer right down onto my card, straight down on. Um, but yeah, it soon goes. We've got another one down this end of the house as well, but could do with another one down here. So I'm going to pop that on lower because, I again, I did it quite high on my last card. I'm going to bring it down a bit lower. I've just remembered as well, I think on my original card, I took my Misty Moonlight Stampin' Blends and I did a bit of splatting over here, but I'm not going to do that now. It didn't stand out that well anyway, so I'm going to leave it as it is. Right, my little flowers can just come in now. So exactly the same as we did before. So one down here, we'll tuck you behind there. Push him back down in a minute. One hiding the end of that stem. I 
and I haven't raised these undimensionals even though this part is um, we'll tuck you under there like that didn't curl the edges did I like that so next as before another skinny strip of pale papaya i think this is half an inch on the width and i want it just to overhang on the left so we'll just cut about there and then on this layer i'm going to pop a couple of dimensionals because i've raised up this one here Eliander's got his second jab on Thursday. Oh, brilliant. Jason's got his coming up, I think, first week next month, first week in June. So you're not planning anything too strenuous for the weekend now, just in case. I mean, touch wood, he'll be okay, but he's not feeling great. You don't want to have too many plans going on. So I'm just going to lay this one down over my DSP layer. I think that's a bit crooked. Pull it up quickly before it sticks too much. Still looks crooky. Such a job to see from where I'm standing. I think that's straight. <laughs> when I hold it up like that, it gives me a better idea because it's a little bit closer. Um, yeah, I... I haven't heard anything about my second jab as yet, so we shall wait and see. Let's bring my foam mat back in. And I think I am going to use, let's see if another greeting. Little card, big thanks. Will that fit? Don't think it will. I could get another scrap. Let's just leave it as it is. And on my original, I think I did do this in Memento. But I think because it's inked, let's leave it at Garden Green. And remembering that I need to... just want to flatten that out a bit. I need to hover this stamp down to the right slightly. to get a straight image, which isn't too bad. And then we're going the opposite way on this one. So snipping. In that direction. And popping, let's just put a couple of dimensionals. Let's hide one in there and put one there. And then we'll hover this greeting just over this side. We've got a bit more leafage showing on this card. And then to finish, we'll do exactly the same with the pearls. Um, let's just use a medium rather than opening the other packet. Let's use a medium one, just colouring it in. And then two smalls. It does dry really quickly, but what's left here on the acetate sheet doesn't dry so quickly. So just be cautious that you could be picking it up on your fingers. That one hopped like a frog then. Let's pop those on. Oh, I've got two for the price of one. Move you in. And there we go. So quite bold for me. You know me, I don't use dark colours that often. And quite a lot of base cards showing there. So let me bring back in the other one. So in my world, these are the same but different. So exactly the same sketch just kind of moved from one side to the other. So this pale papaya panel, I've just popped on the left on here and then on the right on here. And I've just switched the angle of my greeting. So I don't dislike this one 
but I do prefer the brightness that this one brings. So I hope you've enjoyed those. Let us, I feel a bit sniffy today. Sorry if I'm sniffing. I'm conscious that I'm, I could be sniffing, but I, yeah, let's say no more. I'm just a bit sniffy. I'm always sniffy, but I'm just a bit more sniffy today. Okay, so that was the two that I've had planned to make for. I've got one to share with you using that background stamp. So I was playing, I had a flower left over. I had this strip of cardstock left over and I had this panel of pale papaya left over. So I just kind of threw them all onto my card and just die cut another smaller label. I did a bit of splatting with my pale papaya stamping blends and I used the Misty Moonlight stamping blends to colour in my pearl this time. So, But I wanted to show you this lovely image here that you can just create beautiful backgrounds with it. Um, there's lots of possibilities with it. You could colour in, let me show you it in the set. You could just colour in individual ones with different coloured marker pens. Um, and I think I was playing around on the back of here. Yeah, so you could, I was originally going to put my panel kind of on here and just have a bit overhanging, but there's so many different options with it. It's such a pretty little background image. Um, and I've used it in other ways, but I'm not seeing a card on my display. Must have put it away, but I have used that that um, long image, that row of flowers on other things as well. And of course, if you love a bit of fussy cutting, you could fussy cut these out and use them to dot around your cards. So that's today's three projects. Um, just looking at a different way of using this image rather than what you are seeing, what's the obvious thing on it. So let me just catch up with comments. Ruth, you don't do veg. Your mum tries to encourage you. That's good. Oh, you're getting your head around flowers. Yeah, not something not something I've got into as yet. I would like to. Um, I see other people growing flowers and I'm very envious. Um, we have a few things like growing in borders, peonies and roses, but... I've got enough room, I could actually grow flowers, but I think I've got enough to be doing at the moment. I do really feel at the moment that I need help. I need a gardener to come in. We did have a gardener a little while back, um, but she's moved away. And I just feel at the moment that I'm kind of chasing my tail with, with housework and gardening and working um, and being there for family as well. So I'm, I feel like I'm spreading myself thinly in all directions, so. Zana, have you have you not had your have oh had your first? You've had your first vaccination. How am I reading that? Am I reading it wrong? You've got to see a res respiratory specialist. Oh bless you. Well, thanks, Ellie. Thank you for liking my projects. Okay, let me just talk with you quickly about a couple of other things before we go before I say goodbye, today I got to sign up for a lovely um, business conference for Backstage. Now, because of COVID, we can't meet in person. So we would have been heading overseas for an exciting trip away, but it cannot be. So that's the way it is. So this will be a virtual event. And, and this happens for just grabbing some other stuff um, for leaders. When you reach a certain title, you get to attend certain events. So I'm really, really excited about that. So I have today registered for that event. And I'm hoping soon that some of my team members will be joining me. Uh, what else have I got here to talk to you about? So we have a free digital download for everybody. Um, it's called United Through Creativity and we've got some fabulous, let me just show you a couple. Here is one. 
got some really great images um, and Stampin' Up! created them for World Diversity Day. And it's all about having communities come together and, you know, realising the importance of cultural diversity and things like that. So um, these are available via my online shop. There's a whole load of them. This I've just printed these onto photocopy paper. Um, oh, that one's upside down. So they're for you to download and print. I mean, this is just fabulous. Colour in, do what you like with them. Um, there are also greeting sentiments, so um, lots of different things. Obviously, they represent different markets that Stampin' Up! have. Um, so different images will suit each market, you know, in, in their own way. And you'll see that when you look at the downloads, um, they're kind of to suit different markets. So please head over to my online store and have a look at those. Um, and Stampin' Up! are encouraging to use some hashtags as well so that everybody can get to see everybody else's projects, which is really, really fun. Um, so you can go over, print those off. They're totally free. They're gonna be around for quite a while. I'm gonna think they're around for about a year. Um, they're there for a while. Also, I've now got ready my two PDFs for my online classes this month. And these, although I say this month, they will be around for a while. So it's not like after the end of the month, you'll, you won't be able to get your hands on them. Um, but both of the PDFs are quite detailed. You've got measurements, you've got photographs. You've got lists of products that I've used and each one is accompanied by a video tutorial. So the PDF on its own is £5, but if you choose to buy the video along with it, which will give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to put all of the projects together visually, obviously you've got steps here, but it means that um, you will be able to see exactly how I've put them together. So if you buy the PDF and the video tutorial, then that's £10. So, so that's access to a class for £10 with all instructions and a good video showing you how to put everything together. All the measurements are in the PDF. So, and as I've said, they're not just for this month, they will be around for a long while. I'm hoping to get them set up on my events website. So if you're interested, you need to email me to request that information because it's not actually on the PDF side of it. It's not actually on my events website because there are VAT implications that go along with that. So that's something I have to work with my web designer on. And to be honest, she sent me lots of lovely information, but I just haven't taken any of it on board as yet too many things going on so the other thing as well is the new kits will be launching on the 1st of June which is super exciting I'm not going into much detail because this is going to be a separate video but this is one of them it's the sentimental rose card kit and this is one of the all-inclusive and it's got a beautiful stamp set in here that has some lovely sentiments greetings images on it we've got card bases it makes nine cards you've got your block you've got your ink you've got some adhesives some embellishments honestly this kit is fabulous but i'm gonna shut the lid and give you more details about that now the thing that you need to know is that these kits are available only while supplies last i guess so if a kit sells out then it's gone okay they're they they will be changing and this is why they're not actually in the catalog they are going to be on the website so again you'll need to head over to my online shop and take a look there'll be lots of information coming and i will be doing each month i'll be doing a zoom class that will be free to attend so you can come and hang out with me via zoom and it doesn't matter which kit you purchase you don't have to get the same one as me but you you will need to purchase the kit through me through my online store and then i know that you've got you've purchased and you've shopped with me and then you will get invited to an online zoom catch up with me which will be really fun 
So that is coming 1st of June. We've also got a retired list for the January to June mini catalogue coming, which I've had a look at it today and there are loads of items reduced up to 50%. So more details coming on that in the next couple of days because what did I say we were? 25th today. Goodness gracious. It's going to be June. So I'm going to leave you with these three projects. It's time for coffee for me. Thank you so, so much for joining. I hope you've enjoyed my colour combo. I'm still not convinced that this... I love Misty Moonlight, don't get me wrong. But this colour combo as well that I did last week, still not 100% me. It is kind of subtle, but it's still not 100% me. So, but there we go. I love that the hand-penned pattern papers are inspiring me to pull out the colours that are included and do different things with them. So I'm going to head off now. I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day. Um, it's a bit of, wind, bit of wind going on out there, looking out of the window. Um, but I think, fingers crossed, we could have a bit of warmer, drier weather coming our way. So take care everybody thank you so much for joining me if you've got any questions about anything um if you want to order anything that you've seen me use today and you don't already have a demonstrator then please do get in touch and if you want to visit my online shop head over to kerrytims.co.uk and click on the shop button at the top and that will take you directly to my online shop and you will see the scrolling banner Across the top you will see where the the download link is to those free download images as well so you can find those on there so bye for now everybody and take care bye